So today's question is, should I give up automotive journalism because computers can now do the job? I am talking about ChatGPT, which is perhaps the most sophisticated and clever artificial intelligence ever to be made publicly available. Now to see whether or not I should just retire and find something else to do, I'm going to ask ChatGPT a series of questions and see how well it actually can answer them. So let's start off with the first one. How do you recover from lift off oversteer? Now chat GPT says it's a type of skid, can happen when the driver lifts off the accelerator pedal. Good, that's a good start. Remain calm and do not panic. Right, I would not put that in because if you are in a skid situation, you're not going to get your phone out and ask chat GTBT what you're going to do. You, your buttock's going to be clenching, you're going to be worried about spinning off backwards and ending in a fiery death upside down in the arm coat. So yeah, good advice, but probably irrelevant. Now, it also says, take your foot off the accelerator pedal and let the vehicle slow down. Well, no, because you got into that situation by releasing the accelerator pedal. That's what lift off oversteer is, as it said in the first sentence, you're gonna make it worse if you do that. So you actually don't want to do that. It's the opposite of what you wanna do. Still in the direction you wanna go, yes, that's good. Once the vehicle has slowed down, gently apply the accelerator pedal, um, yes, etc. So that's a poor answer. I'm gonna give it one out of 10 because of the fundamentally poor advice in point two and the rest of it wasn't um, that great either apart from the steering and looking where you want to go. Now I do have a video on oversteer recovery. I'm not going to go through, through that um, at this point. We're just going to move on to the next question which is a trick question. How do you put a Land Rover Defender into four-wheel drive? Now you're all thinking, who, those of you know, who know Land Rover Defender is thinking, aha you can't. Well I know that's the point. So the Land Rover Defender is an all-wheel drive vehicle and ChatGPT says it will vary depending on the specific model and year of the vehicle. In general, the, the process is make sure the vehicle is in neutral. Yeah, um, handbrake applied. No, that's not necessary. Locate the transfer case lever. Well, the new one, the L63, doesn't have a transfer case lever, so should be more specific about that. Move it to the four-wheel drive setting. It doesn't have a four-wheel drive setting. It's all-wheel drive, um, etc. So basically here, it's got it pretty much wrong and if you were in a Land Rover Defender trying either a new one or an old one you'd be pretty confused by these instructions but they look very credible so one out of ten there. Okay this next one I have a bogged 4x4 on the beach and the tide is coming in what should I do to recover? Well ChatGPT says you should act quickly to try and recover the vehicle before it's completely submerged. Quite master of the obvious really ChatGPT Here's some of the steps you can take. Stay with the vehicle. Yes, that's generally a good idea in an emergency situation, but we're talking tide recovery here, beach recovery. We're not talking remote area um, uh, situations here, survival situations. Turn off the engine and engage the parking brake. Mm, not my top advice, but okay, that's, that's all right. Assess the situation. Is it on soft sand? Well, yes, we know it is. Is it in a ditch or rut? No, because it's on a beach. It, the tide is coming in. Um, if actually we get to point four at last some useful information try and dig the sand out from around the tires yes that's good but it should say try and dig the sand from in front of the tires and dig it around the vehicle so only rubber is touching the ground so not not great there try to use a board or piece of metal to create a ramp for the tires to climb out that is good advice but i'd also mention traction ramps as well if you have them um, if the vehicle is being submerged if there is enough time you can walk back to civilization for help well that's direct contradiction of the first bit of advice there so poor advice because it's missing the main thing here two points one Everyone who knows sand driving is screaming at this point, let your tyre pressures down, right, right down, maybe to 10 or 8 psi, on, depending on what sort of vehicle um, you're running there. That's going to help more than just about anything. The second bit of advice it's completely missed is ensure your vehicle is in appropriate four-wheel drive. Lock the centre diff, raise the air suspension, put it in low range, disable stability, whatever the case may be, it's all vehicle specific. That's what you've got to do. So I'm going to rate that one 2 out of 10, but again, looks credible. If a trailer I'm towing is swaying, what should I do? Well, uh, it says, um, stay calm and do not panic. Well, yes, again, 
you're not going to read this when the trailer is swaying you're going to read it before so yeah take your foot off the accelerator pedal let the vehicle slow down no that's the first bit of advice you want to give people is if you have independent trailer brakes apply those independent trailer brakes immediately that is the first point you've got to give people now if you don't have independent trailer brakes yes you can try um, slowing down um, a bit um, but no that, that's not the first bit of advice you want to lead, lead with grip the steering wheel firmly yeah okay check your mirrors make sure no one's in your blind spot no look if you've got a trailer swaying like that checking your blind spot not your top priority controlling the sway is your top priority um, and if the swaying is severe and you're unable to regain control you may need to stop the vehicle well if you, that doesn't make any sense because you'd be upside anyway look it's just weird so i'm giving that one three out of ten um it's it's really really not not good but some parts of it are okay like like you know um um grip the steering will firmly steer the direction you want you want to go all right now this one how does tow ball mass vary with the height of the tow hitch on a tow car the explanation here is really good if you have a twin axle trailer like this one which is non load share now i'm not going to go into detail between single and um, double axles because again i've got another another video on this but essentially it's saying that when you have the tow hitch at a higher level then the weight on the tow ball increases which is only true if it's a tandem or greater number of axles and it's non load sharing and it's a lower level um, it it decreases and again if it was a single axle that would actually be reversed so I'm going to give that 5 out of 10 because it's really correct for the tandems but no, but it could have been a 10 out of 10 um, if it was for single axles and maybe I should rate it 0 out of 10 I'm kind of a bit conflicted on that all right this one is going to be a 6 out of 10 uh, what typical modifications are needed to take a sports car to the track and it says suspension well that's not what you lead with because typically the main upgrade you want to make is what it's got as point two which is the brakes however it talks about um, larger rotors and brake cooling kits which not the priority the priority is track street pads which it does mention performance pads and brake fluid which it doesn't mention so yeah okay ish wheels and tires you don't really need to upgrade the wheels the tires yes um, that would not be my my second point though um, engine and exhaust yes you can but again to make the car safe for the track or your first modifications i wouldn't say an engine or exhaust is up there number five safety modifications i'd put that as number one things like a uh, um, roll bar roll cage which it's got a harness which it doesn't have racing seats other safety equipment that should be number one so not a million miles out i'm going to give that one um, um, six out of ten another race can you explain the difference between esc and abs so esc helps the driver maintain control of the vehicle yes that's true monitors the vehicle movements compares them to the driver's intended path yes that's true should have been the first bullet point but also good if it starts to lose control can apply the brakes to individual wheels and or increase and en reduce engine power to help during very good explanation of esc i like it professional journalists have done much worse ABS helps the driver maintain control of the vehicle during hard braking. Also true, prevents the wheel from locking up. True again. When ABS is activated, the brakes are applied rapidly and repeatedly, allowing the wheels to continue rotating, providing driver steering control. The last part is correct, the first part is not. When ABS is applied, the driver applies the brakes and the computer systems identify the relative speeds of each wheel. When they see one wheel is slowing down relative to another one, that is a sign of impending lockup and the brake pressure on that wheel only will be fractionally reduced, avoiding the lockup. So, but yeah, that, that's actually a really good explanation. Again, I've seen pros do worse. Um, I'm gonna give that one nine out of 10. What's the difference between a center diff lock and a cross axle diff lock? This is not an easy question, but chat GPT knocks it out of the park. I'm awarding it nine out of 10 for this. So pretty impressive um, because it talks about, it, it explains what a center differential lock is. It says um, it, when it can be used for low traction situations, sends all power um, to all four wall wheels equally not strictly true but close enough i think that's a simplification enough for a basic answer it's got a cross axle differential um, pretty much right as well it talks kind of the concept of one wheel drive um, important how to use them etc it's actually 
really good the only point i'd really miss is to say don't use it on um on surfaces where you can get transmission wind up but that's actually really quite a good answer i could pretty much copy and paste that make some edits and then use it in one of my books so scary stuff okay so that's a quick run through there now um i want to make sort of three points about this first of all novices wouldn't know the difference between a professional's answer and a chat GPT answer because it reads really credible and it's got the words in there and none of them are completely appear to be completely off base and some of them are really good so chat GPT is being used in fact AI generally is being used to write magazine articles and press releases and blog posts and all sorts of things like that and with this sort of technology it's only going to go, get better particularly as we're on chat GPT version 3 at the moment 4 is coming out soon it's meant to be going to blow 3 into the weeds and there'll be 5 and 6 and whatever else so yeah I can definitely see the job of a journalist being made redundant um, but there's the danger which is that some of the advice in there is wrong and dangerous and omits things and some of it is just just incorrect so you shouldn't be relying on it at the moment because I've asked it questions on my area of expertise so I know that if I went to something I didn't know anything about you know which is pretty much everything else then I would not be able to trust chat GPT um, at this point but what someone could do and I can't bring myself to do it is that you could create a blog site on any topic you want just throw a bunch of questions into chat GPT and have it create blog posts and it would seem credible but that's unethical because a lot of the advice would be wrong and misleading um, and incorrect and um, that could definitely going to be a safety issue and that goes against everything I stand for so interested in your views on AI and the future of technology and cars welcome those views whether you are human or a robot in the comment hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching